Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL Server training session with Learn at NoStar. In today's session, we are going to write a SQL query in which we are going to find out if there are any gaps and date records in a table. So we did a video earlier in which we saw that if we had any consecutive date records in the table, for example, we took a scenario of any customer having made any purchase for consecutive end days, then we wanted to find that out. Now this is opposite of that scenario. Here we are finding out that if there are any gaps in consecutive dates in a table. So let's get started. So we are using the same table, the fact sales table, and it has some data for order date. So if we take a closer look at the data, we'll get an idea of what we are trying to achieve here. So we have order date records in this table. We can see that the consecutive date records. So there is a record for 1st of April 2021, then 2nd of April 2021, 3rd, 4th. And after 4th, there is a gap, and then you have a record for 9th. Okay. So to be sure that this is a valid gap, we need to order by the order date so that we are sure that these dates records are in an ordered Fashion. So here if we take a look now, we see that there are consecutive date records from 1st to 4th, then there is a gap, and then you have the next record for 9, then 11, then there is another gap of 1 day, and then the next date record is for 13. So we can take a scenario wherein we are trying to check that for these particular consecutive days there were no sales, and we want to check out for how many consecutive days there were no sales. So to write that query, what we need to do is simply first, the first step would be ordering by all the records by the order date and then finding out these gaps. Now to find out these gaps, we can simply subtract uh, and find out the difference in days between these two consecutive records. So if I try to find out the difference in days between the 2nd of April and the 1st of April, it would be 1. That means that there were sales made for the 1st of April as well as 2nd of April. So for consecutive two days, there were sales that were made. But if I make a difference or take a difference in days between the 9th of April and the 4th of April, we would get a difference of five days, which means that there were five minus one, which is four days missing. Four days of sales were missing. There, was, there were no sales for four consecutive days. So in scenarios like that, we would need to use this query. Now to find out this difference, we need to use some functions from SQL. So let's take a look at what functions we need to use to derive this difference. Okay. So the first thing that we need to use is to be able to identify the next record. So when I am finding out the difference between first and second, and I am on the first record, I should be able to get or fetch the value of the second record. So we are going to use an aggregate function, which is the lead function. Now this lead function is basically, as the name suggests, it will go to the lead record. Lead means the next record. And then we can pick up the value of order date from the lead record. Now to use the lead function, Okay, let's select order date as well to see how it works. Uh, we have used this before in some videos. Uh, if you have taken a look at those videos, you might already be familiar with this function, but for those who are not, we're going to do a lead for the order date column. So order date, and then you have to mention over order by order date because we have to make sure that these records are ordered by the order date and then only it will pick up the next consecutive date. So we are ordering it by the order date and then we are simply let's just put it as lead date. Okay so this is a simple function that we need to use. It's an aggregate function and that's why you have to follow this syntax of writing it over and then order by. If you are grouping by some attribute, you have some key column based on which you are grouping by, maybe the year or something, then you need to use the partition by to group by that particular column and then use the order by. But for now, this seems to be okay. So let's just run this query. 
and see what are our results. So for the first record, where the order date was 1st of April, it picked up or fetched the value from the next record, which is 2nd of April. And it determined the next record based on this order by condition that we gave over here. Now if we go to the 4th of April, we see the next record fetched is 9th of April. So there is a gap over here. So now we have the values for the order date for that record and the next record, the order date from the next record. Now we need to find the difference between these two values. So to find the difference between these two values, there's a function, simple function, whenever you need to find difference in days between date values, you can use date diff, that is the function that you need to use. And the argument that you need to provide for date diff is your unit in which you want to find out the difference. So we know to find out the difference in days, you can also give months, years. So we want to find in days, so you have to give day. Then you have to provide your argument between which or the two date values between which you want to find out that difference. So we want to find it out between order date and this lead date that we just calculated over here. Okay, let's just put it within brackets because it's a calculation. And then just close this bracket over here. And now let's call it something like a gap. All right. So now we have these, this function that is ready with us. Let's just execute this query. Right over here. And now we can see that for that record, we see a gap. So wherever we see a gap of one, that means there was a consecutive next record present. But wherever we see a gap greater than one, so this is five, we see that there is actually a gap. So there were no sales, not for five days, but four days. So if you want to find out exactly for how many sales, consecutive days, there were no sales, it is going to be minus one of this value. All right. Okay. So now we just want to capture these time periods where there were no sales. So we need to filter this. So we are going to put this in a subquery. So we are going to write select from and make this as a subquery. Okay, or a temporary table and give it some name as maybe no sales. Okay. And then you have to apply a where condition where you have to just say where no sales dot gap is greater than one. Right. Select star. Now, if we execute the whole query, okay, okay, so we have to remove this order by part from here. Okay, now let's execute this query and we'll get only those dates after which there was a gap. Okay, so after fourth, there was a gap of five, means you have to do four. Okay, so there was a gap of five days. So if you do four, fourth of April plus five, that means the next sales was on 9th of April. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, if you want to find out the, ex uh, the exact uh, consecutive end days when there were no sales, you have to subtract one from this. Okay, because there was a sale on 9th, right? So there were actually only four days between 9th and 4th when there were no sales, which is five, six, seven, and eight. All right. So this is how you can write this query uh, by using simple functions, simple aggregate functions and date functions as date diff and the lead function. These functions are very helpful. So it is always nice to have a good understanding of the aggregate functions. The lead function is one of them. The lag function is there. If you want to calculate from the previous record the difference, then the more the other more important functions are the row number functions, the rank functions, the dense rank functions. So there are plenty of videos on our channel in which we have covered these functions. We'll also do separate videos in which we'll explain the difference between these different functions, um, especially the row number and rank functions. If you found this video useful, then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, please do like, comment, and share this video. We'll be posting many more videos soon. If you have any suggestions, feel free to put them in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good day. Bye.